were turning back both the pedestrian people and also the vehicles that are non-essential vehicles back um, to where they're coming from and to ensure that they are not allowed into Lagos. Trucks and other vehicles carrying designated essentials will continue to be given access into the state, but we must emphasize that any truck that we see that is bringing more than seven people that we have instructed, we've seen instances even on the media and in some other states where people are hiding under the, with the pretense of coming with food items or, or, or animal produce, it is not acceptable. Such vehicles will be turned back and they will not be given access into the state. I will now need to talk about the report on the usage of face masks in public places. I would say that I'm not fully encouraged yet with what I've seen, and I imagine that we can do a whole lot more. As a government, we have continued to produce and to continue to share uh, face masks to the citizens. Just today, we've taken another delivery of another 500,000 units, and we're pushing them out immediately just to support and ensure that as many people as we can support to have a face mask, as many as we can support will continue to do it. But like I said, people need to take responsibility. People have to take responsibility. This face mask wearing is to protect yourself. You have to help us protect you and protect your loved ones. It is not a showpiece. It is not something that will believe that it will inconvenience you. It is really to protect you and to protect your family. Please and please again, if you have any public engagement, make sure compulsorily that you're wearing a face mask. We've also heard of people that are sharing face masks. Please let us desist from this very, very uncivilized act. People are not meant to be sharing face masks in public places. Please let us be able to communicate this to our citizens and to our people effectively. Let me reiterate again that the gradual easing of this lockdown is dependent upon the compliance of each and every one of us, which is the hashtag take responsibility. As a government and elected to uphold the security of its citizens, which includes the health security, by the way, let me make it clear that we will not hesitate to review the terms of this easing if we do not see an improvement in the next couple of days. I want to re-emphasize that if we not see an improvement in the next couple of days, we will be forced to evoke again a very, very painful decision of bringing the entire system under lockdown again. I'm aware that the presidential tax force has also made this point, and very, very importantly, that the continued maintenance of this is, is only guaranteed when people consistently comply. Let the members we have seen, let the numbers we have seen this week stand as a warning for all of us because we are monitoring and will be checking this on a daily basis. However, before I close, let me take this opportunity to thank all our frontline workers. I'm indeed happy to say to you that a lot of our health workers that were in isolation, they have since um, turned very well, and some of them are actually in their homes. Some have assured me that they'll be reporting back to work tomorrow and next tomorrow. So I want to thank them very much, and I want to give kudos to them. I'm sure you are aware that we have a dedicated isolation center for all of our health workers. Once they do not feel well or they have any reason to not to go home, we have a provision for them um, to ensure that we take care of them fully. I'm also using this opportunity to thank all our PSP operators who are the first responders at picking up the waste disposal of the medical waste um, that we're using. And they themselves um, have been doing a human's job, and I want to thank and commend them. We have a psychosocial team that is going around to help us implement this support system and the effort to manage the very real potential for a burnout and exhaustion of all of these things we are talking about. 
I must also especially thank my colleagues in cabinet who have also continued to work tirelessly. I think this is the first time I'm, I'm thanking them because I know how much I drive each and every one of them. We have virtual meetings almost on a daily basis, you know, and I want to thank them publicly and say that the job is not yet done. We certainly have the responsibility that we have signed to negotiations and will not stop at anything. Let me finally use this opportunity to remind negotiants that our whistleblowing hotline is still live and is working. We want to thank and commend a few people that have responded to us and we've used that as a test case to be able to attack and bring about sanctions in a few places. The numbers are still live 0901 051 3197 3198 and 3199. We are guaranteeing strict confidentiality of whatever they bring to us. Let me say finally again that I cannot thank our citizens enough, but we are at a critical point where, like I said, everybody needs to take full responsibility. Thank you very much, gentlemen of the press. And we are now open for a few questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll go into questions. Gentlemen of the press, you agree with me. This is just an assessment report, and we probably have to have a short numbers of questions. Good afternoon, sir. Can you walk? Okay, good afternoon, sir. My name is Adia Dodger. I work with CDC News. Yes, um, as the symptoms of COVID-19 can be likened um, to that of fever Sorry? and common cold, we've uh, seen the increase in uh, herbal medications in Lagos State and probably in Nigeria as a whole. Uh, most people are resorting to indiscriminate usage of herbal medications and um, some of them are using it to treat symptoms really. We would like to know what Lagos State is doing uh, in this direction because it is a danger that uh, they may end up I mean, increasing the community transmission of COVID-19 without knowing. So is the state looking towards a herbal medication solution or coming out to give advice for the users. Then my second question, which is the final question, is that um, I know that the health uh, ministry gobbed 33 billion naira out of 1.168 trillion naira of 2020 budget. Um, I want to know, uh, we were told that you are going to increase it by 18%. Uh, has that been done? And what exactly uh, is that increase? Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. I'm Mary Alale Yusuf from Channels Television. I want to ask about the health workers. I'm wondering, do you have um, a, um, a set a plan in place to test them from time to time, rather than waiting for symptoms to come, you know, for symptoms to show up in them, since they are frontline workers and they are special. They are not like uh, the rest of us. They have to face patients every day. Uh, that's all. And that will be wholesome. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Adi Doja, thank you. How about medication? Um, I will attempt to say a few things that I know. I know that we're con currently conducting trial medicine, uh, which includes the um, hydrochloride um, treatment. And I'm also aware that they're also looking at other. Um, um, other treatments which could inc include herbal treatment, but I'll let the Commissioner for Health also tell us truthfully where we are with all of those remedies. And, you know, I know that I've also heard that people are self-treating themselves. The problem with herbal is if you don't have the right dosage, you know, it might also cause other um, um, organ um, failure or organ diseases that you don't, if you don't have it in the right in the right mix, it might also, um, while treating you, also cause a few other damage to your system. But I will let him also answer where we are with a lot of other treatments. Um, um, you, also, you also asked the question around our budget for health and um, if, I, if we've increased. Okay, so the figure you mentioned, that's our total budget. But the figure you mentioned for, 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 um, for health, yeah, that's your capital budget. So my total budget for capital budget this year 
was about seven eight hundred billion. I don't know the figure offhand, but it's about sixty percent of of the one point three. So which in two is about seven hundred and something billion. So it's of that seven hundred that you have the thirty three billion, which comes to about twelve thirteen percent or thereabout. And so what I said was that over the next the life of our administration will plan to increase to about eighteen percent. That's number one. But more importantly is also to mention that we are going to have some budget review in the course of either this month or next month because of the reality of where our finances are. And I can assure you that even whilst other non-health um, services might suffer in terms of deep in their numbers, health will certainly will not suffer. So what it means is that once we do that budget reordering, you will see that the percentage on health will, in fact, will go up as compared to other lines um, that we have and because of what we're doing and the other things that we're planning to do in that sector. Um, so, Mary, um, regarding the health workers, the plan for us to have tests on, on um, well, I mean, the, the commissioner will also answer to that. But you see, the, the, the challenge is also the capacity, you know, and, and the number of people out there that we need to test, right? I'm sure that part of the strategy will be that maybe they will have a scheduled time in which all of them can be taken and have another, because that's the kind of thing that I think had happened at IDH. You know, there was a time in which, you know, a whole lot of them were tested, you know, but maybe we're now going to extend that to all the health workers. It's also a function of the capacity and what we're doing with our various um, testing solutions. I know, and I think it's important for me to mention this, you know, at the last address, I did transparently told you that we had a backlog of samples that were collected, and I'd mentioned to you that we probably will see some heights in the numbers because once we start um, testing those samples, it will, I mean, there's, there's a likelihood that we'll see a bit more positivity. So, um, and that is really what has happened um, this week. Not necessarily because um, of anything other than the backlog that we had to clear and must be in a position where we keep up with our, with our train and ensure that we do not have any backlog that's going to give us, I mean, um, any spike um, going forward. Um, Commissioner, maybe you just want to say something about it. How about? Thank you very much for those questions. Um, regarding the uh, alternative medicine solutions, uh, there are two categories. There are food supplements, which are recommended that may improve your immunity. And these food supplements are natural things that we normally consume. Um, and some herbalists or alternative practitioners would advise that you increase your diet or you supplement your diet with certain uh, food supplements. However, that's different from herbal concoctions. Uh, herbal concoctions need to be subject to the same clinical trials as we subject uh, drugs because every concoction, we're not sure what the component is, whether it has some elements that may be toxic to you. Uh, so in the event of you trying to treat the COVID-19, you may find some toxicity within the concoction. So it's very important that we practice evidence-based medicine and that we're not permitting uh, situations where uh, legations are subject to ad hoc therapies that have not been proven, uh, which may cause additional problems. Uh, it's also very difficult to standardize the doses of herbal concoctions, and we have a traditional medicine board and a traditional medicine research committee, and they're part of our research agenda, and we have tasked them to be able to standardize herbal concoctions and to submit those concoctions to the research committee for consideration within our clinical trial uh, range of activities. Uh, regarding the uh, subjection of testing, testing of doctors, health workers, health workers and uh, frontline workers, we have a very low index of uh, suspicion when it comes to health professionals. If they complain of any of the symptoms of COVID or in fact just tiredness, then we have uh, a plan where we subject them to uh, testing on a regular basis just to make sure that uh, we're picking things up early and that we're treating them as soon as we can. We have thousands of healthcare professionals and you know we have to use our testing capacity in a judicious manner. 
So what we do, there's no standing rule, but if any of our healthcare professionals feel that they're feeling slightly tired or unwell or body pains, we allow them to take the test very easily. I think it's also important that I mention that um, all of the health workers that are on frontline COVID, that are, that are managing our COVID patient, over 70 to 80 percent, if not 90 percent of them, are under uh, uh, managed uh, facilities, meaning that uh, both their accommodation and transportation are controlled you know, with us. We have spaces for them, we have accommodation for all of them, and we have transportation for a whole number of them. So, so they are all contained and we know where they are and we know. And so we're not allowing them to go get into the community or to go um, get into their families um, indiscriminately. So we, we, we have all of them contained and they're happy with, with, with the, you know, it's only if you opt out of it. So I have about 80% of them that are, um, that are being managed, you know, uh, in a lot of our facilities, you know, on a daily basis um, just to ensure that they have the comforts of um, a good work space environment. Thank you very much. I think that is the end. And uh, I'll take away for today's simply evaporate the hashtag take responsibility as given by Mr. Governor. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. Thank you very much. Thank you.